Morning. Uh, sound like you have a little gig next door as well, so uh, hopefully it was convenient for you. Um, we had practice number 19 last night. It was a you know outstanding practice. Um, a lot of enthusiasm under the lights around game time uh, for, for next Thursday night's uh, uh, home opener. Uh, but was really happy with uh, last night's practice. Um, wanted to get everybody together. Uh, it's been a long competition between uh, Keaton uh, Slovis and Nick Patty. Um, I think we've come to a conclusion here. Uh, we want to name a starter. Uh, but, uh, you know, just a little bit about both of them. Again, it's been long. I mean, it's been a long competitive, you know, we've looked at every tiny little detail uh, of, you know, of every statistic you could possibly uh, go from third down, red zone team, you know, everything. And we've got, you know, mapped out from, from spring ball. And it was a close competition. We couldn't come out of spring ball and make that decision. Uh, it was not an easy decision right now either uh, to make that call. But, uh, you know, the, the first thing I'll say about both those guys is they got high IQ at that position. Both of them can lead our football team uh, into an ACC schedule. Um, uh, so we got confidence in both of them. Uh, and, uh, but unfortunately, the quarterback position is one guy. Um, it becomes a you know, one-man show. And uh, like I said, we got confidence. And you know, there's going to be a time you know, throughout the season that you know, uh, someone else is going to have to step up, just like every other position. But um, you know, these, two, you know, these two guys together in that room with competition, with Keaton Slovis being the new guy coming in and Nick Patty being the vet, you know, the, you know, I just couldn't be happy with what Coach Cignani, the cult, culture he's built in that quarterback room, and how those two get along. Um, I mean, they're like they're like this. They're like two brothers in that room from everything I see. So we're lucky to have both of these guys. Um, and uh, you know, with that, after long co uh, conversations with the staff, uh, Keaton Slopes will be our starting quarterback here uh, for that home opener uh, next week and, and moving forward. Uh, just got a lot of confidence in what he's done. Uh, I guess really come down to probably a little bit more consistent, uh, very accurate with the football, um, and uh, you know, just you know he's a, he's a really really good passer. Uh, we think he can he can lead us. So uh, that's the conclusion we came to after you know a long 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 time. So uh, appreciate your patience uh, with that. And with that, I'll open it up for questions. Pat, how, how how was his progress as far as you know, Nick, Nick understood the guys, he had a better sense of the team. What, what, what did you see in Keaton's skill of progress? And when did you feel like he started to take that jump ahead of? You know, it's hard to say that, you know, when, you know, I told you when, then you say, oh, you made that decision back on that day. Um, it's just been a slow process, you know, and, um, you know, I think, you know, I think everybody has a lot of confidence in, in Nick Patty, and he was the guy, you know, uh, that's waited a long time to be the guy. Um, and again, you know, as a, as a coach, as an offense coordinator, as a quarterback coach, as a, as a staff, we can't just make personal decisions about who is best to lead this football team, you know, in the city of Pittsburgh. And, um, like I said, it wasn't easy, but um, you know, we just you know came to that conclusion after a long time. Just like some other positions, I mean, uh, it is a highlighted position. It's the one you know you guys are here for today. Um, but you know, there's a lot of positions we think the same thing about whether it's a middle linebacker, that safety that's going to protect the you know the defensive field. Pat, I, I, I know you get surprised with both of those guys, but what was the separator? Yeah, you know, I would say the separator end is probably just accuracy. I mean, just accuracy um, and. Uh, and again, you know, Keaton's really, really good in the pocket. Uh, he does, it, you know, and Nick is too. Again, I don't want to slam it, you know, because <laughs> he's good in the pocket too. He's going to scramble, he's going to run. And, um, but, you know, I, I'd say just putting the ball where a receiver's going to catch it and be able to get yards after the catch. Coach, obviously the quarterbacks have showed you and Coach Signetti that they were the guy for the job. How much of this was involved in showing the locker room and his fellow teammates that, you know, Keaton obviously also was the guy for the job? I think that's always the case. I mean, I think that's the case with every position. I mean, you could grab a guy in here and say, who's the best at this? And they'll be able to tell you. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, and again, I haven't gone around and asked a bunch of guys during camp, but I think it just became evident as time went on uh, that that was what we had to do. Uh, Coach, was there any leadership qualities or experience that came into play with Slovis with the position for him? No, I, I really, it's not a leadership thing. I mean, I think both those guys are leaders. Um, you know, whether they're captains or eagles or, or whatever, uh, both those guys are leaders. Our quarterback better be a leader. So it had nothing to do with leadership. They both uh, would do a great job there, but that, that wasn't going to be, you know, they wouldn't be quarterbacks if they weren't both leaders already. Uh, you know, both those guys are, you know, have leadership qualities and will lead this football team. I feel like Slovis gives you a good chance to push the ball downfield that vertically. We hope so. I mean, we hope so. That's, you know, one of the, you know, it's, it, you can only throw a short ball and you can't throw a deep ball when you got problems. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons the accuracy, Chris, um, you know, deep balls, intermediate throws, uh, making good decisions and 
and you know, and I guess you know, talked about accuracy being one of the big reasons. It's also protecting the football. You know, um, you know, we want possession of the ball, and if we don't have possession, we want to punt it away. Um, and I think you know, just the consistency there of you know, protecting the football and making sure it's you know, in our possession, we're not going to give it away is, is also probably one of the reasons. How much did the mobility play in this? Um, mobility, you know, I think both of them are very mobile. Um, I think both of them can move, uh, make plays with the feet, like a Kenny Pickett type guy. So you know, we'll find out they're both tough like Jenny, but uh, uh, you know, both of them can make plays with the feet, so I mean, they're, they're dual threat guys. Do you anticipate the packages to be pretty up that that season? Uh, not right, not right now, and, and um, you know, don't need one right now. But if we need to, Terry, I'll let you know that we we put it in, and, um, and we'll you know we'll tell the the, the key. Do you want a package in? Okay, okay. I'd rather put you a quarterback. Okay. See what you got. Um, you know, they were out there all summer, you know, but again, it wasn't just Keaton. I mean, they were all work, and, you know, I couldn't tell you when guys were with Keaton in the summer and, and when they were with Nick, um, and we had the different times. Um, but both of them worked their tail off. They're both in the office for a long time. They work. Um, that's one thing, you know, I'm sure you know, the Steelers have figured out that Kenny is a worker. Um, we're going to work over here, and they're going to find a way to, to get better than somebody else by working at it. You can't just have a talented arm, a talented body, uh, you know, be a talented passer. Uh, without working at it, doesn't matter. You better study the game of football, and, and you know I trust both of those guys will you know will prepare like starters. How have you seen uh, Keaton's excitement just kind of leading up to this game? I'm sorry. How have you seen? I guess both of them. How have you seen both of their excitement kind of just leading up and leading into next week? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen the excitement yet. I don't know. Um, I think the fans are excited. You know, we're low key. We just went 19th. I think there was some excitement last night in practice, but. Uh, I think you know quarterbacks are like this. I think our team is like this. They're just worried about ourselves right now, and then we'll worry about. And I think you know excitement starts probably you know next Thursday morning when you wake up, or maybe Wednesday night when you can't sleep. That's when the you know it kind of hits you. Until then, we got a lot of work to go to win this thing. What was the, the input and the feedback like with you and Frank working up to this decision? Did you have a conversation with him last night or this morning? How did it kind of? We have a conversation, Chris, every single day. I mean, every evening. I think it's six forty-five. Uh, is that right, Chris? Uh, I think it's every, you know, for the last you know, 20, 25 days or whatever it's been that we've been in camp. I think today's our fifth off day, uh, thanks to the NCAA giving us two extra ones. So it's been like 25 days, but you know, during camp we meet every evening on practice and we go through the entire depth chart uh, and go through every name on that depth chart. How do you do today? You know, how's that guy doing on the scout team, the rocks? You know, we go through it every day, uh, how those guys are doing. So the conversation goes on. Then we obviously we've had some you know, one-on-one conversations as well figure out where we're going and what we need to see and what we need to get. Have you taken input from any of the other players in the offense who are on your mind this week as to how you get yourself comfortable with? No, no. I mean, you know, because everybody's got their opinions, right? I mean, um, you know, you, you just have to watch it and watch who's moving the ball down the field. And um, I think they feel comfortable with both of them, both of those guys. I don't think it's a comfort thing. It's a um, it's other things. Is there an outfit that was similar to what Frank does with what Keaton is doing in your USC? You know, an offense is similar. I mean, you know, they, they, the quarterback, they, they sit back there in a shotgun, they take the snap, and they might clap, or they might put their hands out, might raise a knee. Uh, you know, it, in Southern Cal, they threw the ball. You know, they hand it off. It's all the same, a little different schematically. But, you know, we're different than we were last year. I mean, there's some similarities to what we do in our, you know, in our passing game and run game from last year. Certainly, uh, there's some similarities to BC. I mean, so it's hard to say, but football's football. You watch it, and it's kind of like, uh, you know, really watch you know USC watch a ton of USC tape here in the last you know two months just watching them play and not watching Keaton but you're watching them because obviously uh, the offense coordinator at West Virginia uh, is from Southern Cal so um, you know so there's there's that whole aspect of it and very similar uh, offenses. Experience had play in that part of next year you played? Um, not really I mean I'm not you know Obviously, it's a you know check on the other box, but I wasn't going to say, well, we're starting this guy because of that. 
not because of it. It's based on you know, what we saw in the body of work from the first day of spring ball all the way through you know, last night's practice. Thank you. You know, you mentioned Kenny earlier. He's next door trying to win a starting job replacing a guy that's going to the Hall of Fame. One of the, either of these two guys, whoever we start with, is going to have to, you know, there's going to be comparisons to Kenny. Even playing at USC in a big spot like that, does that sort of maybe provide him with the mental toughness that might come if he doesn't look like Kenny 21, 21 Kenny, Kenny Pickett at week one? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want anybody to have to fill those shoes. I mean, Kenny wears a size 18, you know. Kenny is Kenny. Keaton is Keaton. Keaton's got to be Keaton. He's, he's not going to sit there and measure himself off of uh, for who Kenny Pickett was in a different offense. Uh, we just want him to play within himself and do his job, and uh, I think it comes down to that. But, you know, we can't compare. You know, I'm not going to compare myself to Mike Tomlin or, or Vince Lombardi. Uh, just patting our dudes and asking who I'm going to be. And I think once you start to change, try to be somebody else, uh, you know, that, you know, maybe things go off the rails. I think maybe more along the lines of being at USC, the spotlight's back in there maybe develop the mental toughness that he's, we might write about Kenny, comparing him to Kenny, but he, that's not going to bother him. Yeah, I don't think that's going to bother him. He's kind of like this. I don't know if he, you know, I hope he doesn't read anything. If he does, you know, we're going to try to teach him how not to. We've taught that through, uh, through fall camp. We tell him not to listen to you guys, okay? Um, you know, just like, you know, cut out the noise. The only people that really matter are the guys in this room. Nobody else's opinions. It's, you know, uh, even EJ's opinion doesn't matter. It's really what the coach is, what we're telling you. We don't want the outside, you know, noise coming in here. And we love you guys being here. We love you writing, um, but you know, um, it's not going to really. You know, we don't want to listen to it. And, you know, I don't want to listen to it. And I hope our players don't listen to it. I've seen players go down. I've seen good players crash and burn because they've listened to, to the noise. And it's, I guess Nick Saban would call it the rat poison. Is that what he talks about? Rat poison. I mean, uh, you know, that's, you know, don't read it. The good or the bad. You start to feel yourself too. Keaton made mention of uh, in the offseason that he wanted to throw with the wide receivers 10,000 times like Joe Burrow had done at LSU. And he said uh, on the first day of training camp that he felt like he already had, like, he was in sync with the receivers and already had the timing down because they had thrown so many routes. He had thrown so many routes to those guys. Did you see that from the start with him? Yeah, you, you, I mean, are you talking about Keaton? Yeah. I kind of missed the beginning of that because I was trying to look so, to see who was talking. Sorry. I couldn't see. But, um, uh, yes, uh, you know, we saw, I mean, he, he threw a ton of balls to these guys. I mean, like I said, the summer, you know, they're not sitting around, you know, going to Pirates games, although they wanted to go to them. Um, they, they were throwing a lot of balls. I mean, I, I believe, you know, the office late at night, and they're out there under the lights throwing the ball. I'm like, who is out there? What are they doing? There's time they're in the indoor facility at 10 o'clock at night, and people are going, you know, like they're, they're out there throwing like there's been a lot of work put into it. And, and again, you know, Keaton's worked hard to get where he is today, that's for sure. Coach, Nick has obviously been in this situation before as now a backup quarterback. How much are you and Coach Signetti looking forward to having that still experienced guy in that similar role that he's been in for the last few years? Hey, we're fortunate. Let me just tell you this. Is, you know, we have two really good quarterbacks that we feel confident with, and we really do. Um, you know, I can't say right now we have a third-team guy, okay? So, Jerry, you might have to get wrapped up. We're still looking for that guy, to be honest with you. Uh, but we feel really good. It's it's uh, it's a good thing. There's not a lot of people around the country that have what we have, as far as having two really good quarterbacks that you you know can, you know you don't want to have any problems. But uh, you know if you do, you got to be ready for it. So at least we feel ready for that. Pat, I'm interested in just the alignment. You said you call the coaches together, and then they meet with you or one of the top. No, one on one, one on one. Yeah, one on one. What was what was your reaction? You know what? Obviously, one guy's excited. Nick Patty was you know. The, classiest guy in the world. Understood, gets it, uh, smart, classy, you know, just like you, you knew Nick Patty would be. He's a team guy. He understands and, and uh, you gotta love Nick Patty. What, what are some things that you might guys might do differently for Keaton this year? You got a new offensive coordinator, you know, there's different and, and obviously no one is the same quarterback, you know, like you said, Kenny's shoes are big, but you're gonna be asking a lot of Keaton. What are some things that you might do that are different? You know, I can't answer that. I mean, we'll find out, you know, next Thursday. Um, and then, you know, to me, you, you know, you can't really find out about a guy. You know, you can watch videotape, you know, in previous spots. And, you know, uh, we're going to find out the, the, the new version. Because I think Keaton's a better football player than he was, you know, as a freshman at USC. I think Nick Patty's a better player than he was, you know, last year, what you saw in the first two series of, uh, of, of the bowl game. So, 
uh, you know, we'll find out the 2022 version of Keem Slovison. If you can put a stamp on me to tell you know tell me or tell somebody this is what he was there and, and who he's going to be now. I'm excited to see you know what he does. But we'll find out in real game action when the bullets are flying live. Okay, the bullets have been flying live. The quarterbacks have not been non-contact, so it's going to be important for him to go out there and make quick decisions with the ball and, and put the ball in the money. Not an easy job. Everything Neil Brown said, uh, you expect to see some uh, elements of last year's offense. How much of a percentage do you think of the last year's offense from last year towards this year? How much of a percentage do you think? Again, you know, Neil's a smart guy, um, and you're a smart guy. Uh, obviously, if you're doing something well, you want to keep doing it. Uh, you know, in the run game and the pass game. So there'll be similarities. And like I said, there's similarities, you know, there's similarities in what West Virginia was doing a year ago, and they bring in. Uh, you know, the offense quarter from USC. So there's the football is football. I mean, there's 11 guys out there. You can only put them in so many different positions. So there's going to be similarities. We're going to do things that we did well. We're going to stop doing things we didn't do well. And then we're going to add and make things better. And our kids were familiar with the offense a year ago. So uh, yeah, we're going we're to do what we do. And uh, I, I'm, I've been very, very impressed with Coach Zanetti and the preparation of our staff and our players throughout uh, you know, spring ball and camp. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to watching the product. Pat, obviously uh, you're here to talk about the, the new starter, but the old guy's come up a few times. Have you had a chance to watch him uh, in the preseason? Yeah, we just, you know, saw the first one live, of course, and then um, I didn't get home until late. Uh, who did they play that second game? Uh, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. I didn't get home until late, but my kids had DVR, so we wound up just uh, that, you know, that drive before the, the half. I didn't watch the three plays prior to that one. Kind of a mess. I didn't want to watch, you know, uh, watch any mess. Uh, but just to watch that drive, uh, it's, fun, it's fun to watch. You know, I, I guess we got a Sunday game at 3.30 maybe, is that 4.30? Uh, won't be able to watch it, we'll be, we'll be working in here. It'll be out of my, you know, my office. Might have to find a way to DVR this and go back in the evenings and watch every game this year. Usually, you know, I, I catch what I catch, but, uh, you know, it'll be fun to watch. When you watch, are you breaking down the, every snap like he's gonna walk in here the next day, or are you just watching as, you know? No, I never did, I never did break down the quarterback snaps, you know? It's, it, you know, I can, that's easy. You either complete it or you don't complete it, right? Make good decisions or bad decisions. The quarterback's probably the easiest one to grade. Great throw. Ooh, they have threw it behind them. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I won't be great if you watch me cheer. Coach, a fan. Coach, from last week at scrimmage, could you break down the how many reps Slovis got versus Patty in that, given it was at Akersher and there was a little more stake to it? I would say it's been 50-50, and that's a great question. And again, I didn't do a count on it because uh, you never know. Because you know, it's not like we're saying we're going to get this. I know we wanted to get 40 plays with one, 40 plays with the twos, and 20 with the threes. Um, but I couldn't tell you offhand right now. But uh, I guess the thing I would say is those two were rotating ones and twos through the spring, and they were all getting reps for ones and twos. And then we just felt necessary to get, you know, to, to timing-wise just get, you know, uh, that, that quarterback run with the ones and. Give it a little extra time, and we go over the slope. So I you, couldn't tell you, but it, it was probably 50 50, I would say. When did you and Coach Signetti come to the decision? Um, when did we come to the decision? A couple days ago. I mean, I would say after that scrimmage that we kind of said, okay, let's, let's, let's move in the direction. Um, so, yeah. Any other final for Coach before we get to Keen? Coach yeah, he can answer much? questions better than me. Anything else? All right, thanks again for coming today, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.